I've had a privilege to work with a lot of people in my life, and I've had a privilege to share the platform with a lot of people. Without a doubt, without a doubt, one of my favorite people to ever share the platform with, I've had her speak at many of my events. We co-founded this event, and it is with great joy that I bring to you someone, you know, it's, it's, it's so exciting to see a sister who excels and succeeds in everything she touches. touches. This woman, everything she touches turns to gold. And it don't matter if you're talking about writing books, it don't matter if you're talking about writing, it don't matter if you're talking about professional athletes, don't, no matter what, everything she touches turns to gold. So I'm gonna to introduce to you my friend who has the Midas touch, let's give it up, for Dr. Fred Harris! And turn your eyes to the screen. You can get hit and keep pressing forward. Every now and then a speaker comes along that mesmerizes audiences. Every now and then a speaker comes along who truly understands how to move people to live their best lives. Dr. Fran Harris has been called one of the most energetic and transformational voices of the 21st century. Her passionate message of possibility and prosperity has been heard in over 30 countries in corporations, conventions, conferences, high schools, faith-based communities, and universities worldwide. A former Fortune 500 sales executive, business strategist, and philanthropist, Dr. Fran coaches entrepreneurs and multi-billion dollar corporations, helping them to realize their true potential. A WNBA champion, NCAA champion, and Olympic team alternate who launched her first business at age nine. She's the founder and publisher of Collegepreneur, the world's first entrepreneurial ship magazine for teens and college students. She's been featured in over 100 media outlets, including The Today Show, CNN, Oprah's Radio Network, BET, and USA Today. She travels the world speaking, teaching, producing, innovative film, television, video, internet, and stage projects designed to change the world. But what puts Dr. Fran Harris in a class by herself is her ability to connect with people of all ages and backgrounds, inspiring them to unleash their genius and live with power and passion. So get on your feet. I said get on your feet and welcome Dr. Fran Harris! For those who believe something, And Roland, the guy who's on CNN doing all the political introductions and talking about commentary about the Obama race and, and McCain, was introducing everybody on stage and everybody was getting their introduction done on paper. And then Roland had the privilege of introducing T.D. Jakes, Bishop T.D. Jakes. And instead of introducing T.D. Jakes, a video rolled. And he said, oh, well, Bishop did, couldn't get introduced like everybody else. He had to get a DVD. He had to have a DVD, but you know, I was in the audience going, I gotta get me one of those. I gotta get me one of those, yeah. No more introducing me on paper. So how you guys doing, is this good for you? It's been good, everybody's been good? You know, I wanna say just one more thing about Stephen Pierce that I'm glad I didn't say before I got started, before I introduced him. Sitting with Stephen Pierce, you always get multi-million dollar ideas. In fact, every speaker that we have this weekend, every time you talk to them, you get a multi-million dollar idea. If you watch them, you get a multi-million dollar idea. I was talking to Stephen just a couple of months ago about something he was doing. It was just one tiny thing that he had implemented that actually made me $1,000 in 24 hours. How many of you would like to make $1,000 in 24 hours? So those of you who took action with Stephen, Good for you. Your life is about to change. Your life is about to change. Is that exciting? Yeah. All right. So let me ask you by a show of hands, how many of you want to become a multimillionaire? All right. Okay. How many of you by a show of hands are committed to becoming a multimillionaire? And if you are, if it is necessary for you to become a multimillionaire, I want you to stand up. If it is necessary, necessary, all right, have a seat. Go ahead and start my presentation, please. Let me say something. 
I've had a privilege to work with a lot of people in my life, and I've had a privilege to share the platform with a lot of people. Without a doubt, without a doubt, one of my favorite people to ever share the platform with, I've had her speak at many of my events. We co-founded this event, and it is with great joy that I bring to you someone, you know, it's, it's, it's so exciting to see a sister who excels and succeeds in everything she does, touches. This woman, everything she touches turns to gold. And it don't matter if you're talking about writing books, it don't matter if you're talking about great writing, it don't matter if you're talking about professional athletes, don't, no matter what, everything she touches turns to gold. So I'm gonna to introduce to you my friend who has the Midas touch. Let's give it up for Dr. Fred Harris! And turn your eyes to the screen. It's how hard you can get hit and keep pressing forward. Every now and then a speaker comes along that mesmerizes audiences. Every now and then a speaker comes along who truly understands how to move people to live their best lives. Dr. Fran Harris has been called one of the most energetic and transformational voices of the 21st century. Her passionate message of possibility and prosperity has been heard in over 30 countries in corporations, conventions, conferences, high schools, faith-based communities, and universities worldwide. A former Fortune 500 sales executive, business strategist, and philanthropist, Dr. Fran coaches entrepreneurs and multi-billion dollar corporations, helping them to realize their true potential. A WNBA champion, NCAA champion, and Olympic team alternate who launched her first business at age nine. She's the founder and publisher of Collegepreneur, the world's first entrepreneurial ship magazine for teens and college students. She's been featured in over 100 media outlets, including The Today Show, CNN, Oprah's Radio Network, BET, and USA Today. She travels the world speaking, teaching, producing, innovative film, television, video, internet, and stage projects designed to change the world. But what puts Dr. Fran Harris in a class by herself is her ability to connect with people of all ages and backgrounds, inspiring them to unleash their genius and live with power and passion. So get on your feet. I said get on your feet and welcome Dr. Fran there are those who believe something and then feel the power they for some television stuff. And I remember one of my first things I got to do was to interview Barbara Jordan. Anybody know who Barbara Jordan is? You know, if that's the first out of the gate, you got to interview Barbara Jordan? Wow. And Barbara Jordan, we used to call her BJ. She actually used to watch us play basketball at the University of Texas at Austin. Any Longhorns in the house? Hook them! Okay. So, I have to do that occasionally. So, I interviewed Barbara Jordan. And I remember I was so nervous. My first television interview. And I kept saying, BJ, I was just really nervous, really nervous. But I did the interview, and she said, <clears throat> and I quote, you were magnificent. Y'all know how Barbara Jordan talks, right? <laughs> you were magnificent. And I was like, well, hey, BJ was like, I was magnificent. So I, that gave me the confidence to really pursue what I wanted. But here's the thing. How many of you have thought, man, I wish I could really do something, but then you think, mm, but I probably can't do it. I probably can't get it. Anybody else ever felt that way, right? I, really, I probably can really do this, but nah, people like me don't do this. People like me don't do this, whether it's age or, or race or whatever it is. So what I'm going to talk to you about today is really how to build, no matter what industry you're in, how to take it to a multi-million dollar business fast. How many of you have gotten stuff going so fast for you and it's going really well and it scared you? Has that ever happened to anybody? Right? I have that experience even to this day. Stuff is going just as I want it, just as I want it. And I thought, ooh, that's really too good. Anybody else ever felt that way? All right. So we're going to talk about how to build a multi-million dollar business. The first thing I've got to ask you, the reason I started this by saying, who wants to be a multi-millionaire? Everybody wants to be a multi-millionaire. Yes? yes. Then, there, then you move to the level of who is committed to being a multi-millionaire. Because when you commit to it, you've got to do something with it. 
right? I'm committed to working out. Commitment for you for working out may be five times a week. For me, it's three times a week. That's my commitment. I'm committed to doing it. But when something is a necessity, that means you cannot function. You will not live. It will not work for you unless you get it. Yes? Food, air, right? Cheetos for some of y'all, right? You got to have it. If crunchy, right? Flame flavor, Cheetos. But the reality is, if you, if wealth is not a necessity for you, you will never be wealthy. You will never be wealthy. If you just want it, you, you make a little money. But unless it's a necessity for you, you will never be wealthy. There was a time when I was in college, I was working for Procter Gamble, the only job I've ever had. I made $32,000, I was 25 years old. I thought that was a lot of money. Anybody ever think $32,000 was a lot of money? That was a lot of money. Had a company car, had a six-figure package. Oh, I was, it was great. And as long as I was okay with making $32,000, guess how much money I made? $32,000. $32, My point is this. Whatever you're making right now, whatever your financial reality is right now, is exactly what you want to make. And when it's no longer okay for you to make just $32,000 or $60,000 or $180,000, you will make more money. It became a necessity for me to make more money. Not because I had bills to pay, but because the $32,000 level started to feel like poverty for me. How many of you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Right? It started to feel like poverty for me. And so instead of saying, why am I only making $32,000? So I said, how can I create some genius in my life that I can actually make more money? And the first thing I had to realize was that as great as Procter & Gamble was, I was never going to get rich working for Procter & Gamble. As great as I was at selling toothpaste, scope, Tide, Pampers, I was never going to become a millionaire working for Procter & Gamble. I was never going to become a millionaire making Procter & Gamble a multi-multi-billionaire company billion dollar company. So the first thing you have to realize is that whatever you're doing, if you're working for somebody else, that trek up the multi-million dollar mountain, you know, good luck getting there. It's going to take a while for you to get there. So we're going to talk about building your multi-million dollar business, all right? You guys, you guys go with that? Yeah. All right. Oh, come on, give me a collective. Oh, oh, all right? In the beginning, that's me. I think I was about four years old. Am I about four years old? My sister, my sister's in the room. Dr. Nixon, am I about four years old? Three? Okay. I'm about four years, three years old. And here's what I learned. That every success story has a beginning, middle, and an end. Every success story has a beginning, middle, and an end. That's my beginning. I grew up, I was born in Dallas Projects. I didn't live there, so I don't have a real you know, big memory of what it was like to be there. But I heard it was fun. I heard it was great. Right? Close knit. I mean, everybody's around. All that great stuff. We moved to a place called Oak Cliff when I was three years old. And we were one of, I think, maybe two or three black families in the neighborhood at that time. And within six months, I think we were like, everybody was black. In about six months, everybody was black, right? They, in we came, out they went. How many of you, how many of you know what that is? What is that? Just throw some things out there. What is that? Wow. I did this recently, or those guys in the room, no, I spoke at a, at a conference in Charlotte last Sunday, and I said, what is that? And I got all kinds of different things. It's, it's red, um, it's a minus sign. Not, not, never have I put that up there and like everybody almost said, everybody said dash. But that's exactly what it is. Right now, we are in our dash. When we were born, that was our act one. That was the beginning of our lives. When we die, that's our finale. Would you agree with that? Right now, you are in your dash, and some of you are living in your dash miserably. Some of you are living in your dash grossly underachieving financially. Some of you are in your dash in bad relationships, and that doesn't necessarily mean personal relationships, business relationships, okay? So most of you, most of us are born to think about life in this paradigm. We are born, we go to school, we get a degree, we get a job, we hope for retirement, right? We get social security and we die. Is that pretty much the paradigm? We're born, we go to school, 
we get a degree, we get a good job, whatever that means. We hope for retirement. Like my dad, you love the $552 they send you every month at the beginning of the month, and then you die. All right? This is, this is the way multimillionaires approach their lives. We're born. We get an education. That may not necessarily mean that you go to college. You get educated. You develop mastery in your area, whatever that is, speaking, carpentry, whatever that is. You start a company. Wealthy people own companies. Now, let's say we're born that way, and somebody in their lineage started a company, yes? Right? You build wealth. You enjoy a wealthy lifestyle, and instead of dying, you leave a legacy. Yeah. Instead of dying, you leave a legacy. And that's what the Black Millionaire Summit is about. It's not about just us getting together and sharing our secrets. It's about teaching you and teaching us, because we're all learning at the same time, how to create a deeper, more sustainable financial legacy. Sure, we got to the game late, but I don't think anybody in here would deny that this country is wealthy because it was built on the backs of the people who look like me and you. So we should not be the overspending consumer market that we are touted to be, okay? So let me ask you this. Which movie are you shooting? Because you're shooting a movie, right? You're, you're shooting your life story. Which movie are you shooting? Are you shooting the one where you're born, you go to school, you get a degree, you get a job, you go for retirement, you, you, know, you die? Are you shooting the one where you're born, you get an education, you build mastery, you start your own company, you start to build wealth, you enjoy an amazing lifestyle, and you leave a legacy. How many of you are building, or you, you're really operating on the, the former over there? You've gotten that job. How many of you either are or want to be approaching your life on the right side? How many? By show of hands. Okay, well, that's what this weekend is about, and that's what we're doing. All right, so what genre is your story? You're making a movie. What genre is your story? Is it a comedy? <laughs> Be honest. I know y'all got some drama in here. Right? How many of you got your movie is a drama right now? It's all right. It's a good movie. You got a little drama, right? How many horror stories do we have? <laughs> got some saw tools and, saw and some exorcism. Um, how many of you got tragedy, right? Now, if we're honest, our life kind of goes through all of those. All of those. But here's the thing. A lot of people are extras in their own movie. They're extras in their own movie. They depend on everybody else to tell them how they should be living, when they should be doing this, why they should be doing this. They're extras in their own movie. But why are you an extra in your own movie? When you cast it, you can shoot it, you can direct it, but you've chosen instead to be an extra. So for me, I made a decision about 12 years ago that my life was just going to be an adventure. One adventure after another. Just one adventure after another. How many of you would like to live a life that's full of financial freedom and just an adventure after another. You don't even know what, you know, people ask me what I do. You know what I say? Whatever the hell I want to do. That's what I do. That's what I do. Okay? So it's an adventure for me every day. This is what one of my clients said. If you have the chance to work with Fran, meet Fran, read any of her materials, or hear her speak, you will be inspired, but more importantly, you will be about the business of manifesting your million dollar empire. Now, as I mentioned, I grew up, I was born at least in the projects. To my knowledge, there aren't any other millionaires in my family. To my knowledge. And y'all know if there were some black folks in my family that were millionaires, they would have told us at the family reunion, right? So if there were, they would let us know. I want you to ask yourself a question. Who moved your millions? Y'all know the book, Who Moved My Cheese? Who moved your millions? Why aren't you a multi, multi, like, crazy insane money. How many of you believe that it's been, a, it's been a situation where you just didn't have the right connections? Okay? How many of you believe that you're like one contact away from your multi-millions? How many of you believe you're just one, way, one, one step away from a, a multi-million dollar idea? Okay? And how many of you are willing to admit that the reason you haven't made your multi-multi-millions 
is because there's something that you personally need to break through to get to that level. Yeah, every wealthy person will tell you, every wealthy person, rich person will tell you that the only way they got to that next level was to break through some psychological, mental barrier that put them there. And as, as I mentioned to you, very honestly, in my life, things would go well, and then they would just go so well, and then I was like, oh, I don't like this so well thing. Let's add a little drama, a little tragedy. I'm, I mean, you know, even if it's, as you all know, what's consistent and what happens in your life, even if it's bad, you're comfortable with it, right? You're used to it. So when things would get really good for me, I would just you know, find some way to screw it up financially because I was uncomfortable with the idea of being wealthy. For all the reasons that a lot of you are uncomfortable with the idea. People are going to treat you differently. Do people treat you differently when you move up? Absolutely. So I had to get okay with being treated differently. It wasn't the money that bothered me. It was the, the relationships that I, I knew were probably going to change. So I had to get okay, me, you're not doing anything, I gotta get okay with whatever you're gonna do, however you're gonna respond, whatever you're gonna say, all those little comments like, oh, you know, you do this, oh, you fly first class. And I started just saying those things to me. I literally recorded those things. Oh, you fly first class, oh, you're bougie, oh, you're, the, I had to listen to all that, right? Because really, the reality is nobody wants to hear somebody they love say those kinds of things to you. So once I started getting used to that, started hearing that and realizing, of course, that what you say is about you, not about me. And what we think sometimes is that when people say things, that's actually about us. So the people who say, oh, once you make it, you're going to do this, once you make it, that's about you. And here's, here's what's powerful. When you start telling people that, they back off. Why are you speaking your scarcity into my life? When I was younger, I remember my mom died when I was 16 years old, unannounced, unexpectedly, but I remember having a relative. I have to say, the reason we moved out of the projects was because my mother wanted a different life for us. And my father, loved my father, but my father was cool with the projects because it was comfortable, you know? It was comfortable, it was that. So my mom was like, no, we're not living here, let's go. You make enough money, let's go. And I remember my mom wanted this different life for us. And I remember one day, I was nine years old, I will never forget. It's amazing how you don't, remember, don't forget certain things. I remember I had a coat on, and my mom asked me to come out and show one of my relatives. And this relative said, where'd you get that, Neiman's? And I remember being so, like, wow. And the, the seeds that people plant in your head about money and wealth and, to do, and doing well, right? And I remember thinking, oh, it must be bad to, be, to do well. Because if people you love are going to say those kinds of things to you, imagine the people who don't care about you. So at all costs, I was trying not to be wealthy. Which means that in many areas of my life, athletically, if you, you saw my introduction video, I mean, I was on the, the NCAA's first championship team, undefeated championship team, Olympic athlete, all that stuff. Imagine what I could have done or been had I not been afraid of my own greatness. And so there's greatness and wealth. I mean, and I was great even in my fear. So it transferred in every area of my life. And of course, financially. I was only comfortable, and it started to become apparent to me that I was making more money than probably any of my siblings were ever going to make or had ever made. Then I would come back down. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Okay. So there's that psychological barrier that you have to get to and you have to be okay with other people not being okay with you being wealthy. Because the lifestyle I have now far, far, is far better than what it was when I was trying to just be with the group. When I was trying to be with the group. All right. I want you to check your temperature right now. I want you, everybody, check your temperature. Okay? How do you check your temperature? Anybody know how to check your temperature? Not your pulse. Check your temperature. How do you check your temperature? Okay? Check your temperature here. We've been told different things. All right? I'm going to tell you something. Your financial thermostat has been set. And I don't know who set it. But your financial thermostat has been set at a certain level. I don't know if your parents set it. I don't know who set it. But if you want to change what your financial thermostat has been set at, all you have to do 
is walk over to your wall and turn it up. As simple as that sounds, that is the reality. All you have to do is to walk over to your wall and turn up your financial thermostat. Which means you have to do the things that wealthy people do. You have to do the things that rich people do. I went to the University of Texas at Austin. You guys familiar with that? 50,000 students and about uh, 15 of them are, uh, maybe 25 of them are black and 12 of those are on the basketball team, right? That's the kind of college I went to. And we, we were fortunate because we got to be around lots of wealthy people. And what I learned about the people who really had the money was that they weren't talking about that they had the money. What I learned about the people who really had the money is that they were dressed, you know, in Birkenstocks and T-shirts and, you know, one of my early mentors was a guy who actually started Dell. Do we have some sense of how much money he has? But I never saw him in anything but T-shirts, Birkenstocks, and he was one of the first investors in my company. So I learned to do the things that wealthy people do. Some boosters of mine told me when I was in graduate school, never buy a car that you cannot afford to walk onto the lot and pay cash for. I got that at 19. Never buy a car that you cannot walk onto the lot and afford to pay cash for. You don't have to pay cash for it. But if you can't afford to just write a check for it, you cannot afford that car. How many of you have bought cars that you couldn't afford? Right? It's about setting your financial thermostat. So the people who, who basically set our thermostats for us and where we want to go are the parents, media, environment play the role. But you know what? That was then, and this is now. If you're honest, how many of you are still blaming your parents or your teacher or somebody for some aspect of your life right now? All right? That was then, this is now. The person responsible for your current movie, your thermostat, is you. Is anybody surprised by that? Okay. I wrote a book called The Intentional Millionaire, and I wrote the book called The Intentional Millionaire because I started to realize that I could actually print money on demand, that I could actually start to say, I want to do this, and I would start to have that kind of money in my life. If I just got intentional about it, could I create it? If I became intentional about it, could I create it? So I wrote a book called The Intentional Millionaire that was about really manifesting what you want in your life from a wealth standpoint. And it's, there's an index in there that's called ICTABA, I-C-T-A-B-A-H. You guys can play along with me? Give me an I! I is for imprints. Imprints are those things that were put into place either before you were born or once you got here. What are those? Money is the root of all evil. What else have we heard about money? Don't grow on cheap trees. My dad likes to say, I ain't got the kind of money you think I got. What else? What are some of the things your parents said when you, when you were growing up about money? What's that? Fool and his money, right? What's that? What else? Money can't buy happiness. What? You think I'm made of money? The love of money is the root of all evil, okay? Those were the imprints that all of us got. All of us got those imprints from our parents, okay? C, give me a C. C. Conditioning is the repeated, repeated, repeated put on of those imprints. So now you didn't just hear that one time. Your mother and father didn't say something one time. They kept saying it. They kept saying it. So now they're conditioning you around money. Give me a T. Your thoughts about money will always, always dictate how much money you have about it. Now, here's the thing. I'm going to give you a live example. You've heard some powerful speakers already, yes? yes? And every speaker up here has made you an offer, yes? yes. All right? Now, be honest. Some of y'all were thinking, well, if I get Stephen's packet, if I get Myron's packet, if I get Jerry's packet, you think either or. Am I right? You think if I get this, I can't get that. You, that's your thought about money because it's always about either or. Wealthy people think and. They don't think either or. They think I'm going to get Myra's thing and I'm going to get Stephen's thing because they don't see it as spending money. They see it as investing in me. And everybody in this room has had a moment in their life, every wealthy person in this room has had a moment in their life, myself included, where you didn't see the money in your bank account. 
but you found a way to get what you needed, right? You didn't see them on your back, you didn't know where it was going to come from, but you found a way to get it. So I'm going to challenge you with the way you think about money. The way you think about money is going to determine how much you make. So fight yourself through the weekend with your thoughts about money. Give me an A. A. Attitude, your attitude towards money. There's never enough. Um, I got to pay Peter to pay Paul. We've heard all those things, right? Give me a B. B. Your behavior, what you do with your money. What you do with your money will determine whether you're wealthy or not. Are you paying yourself first? Are you tithing or giving to charity or whatever, whatever you do with your money? Because wealthy people don't just think wealthy thoughts. They do wealthy things. And it's a little bit, it's the culmination of a lot of little things that makes people wealthy. It's not one big thing that happens overnight that makes you wealthy. Okay? Give me an A. A. Your actions, what you repeatedly do in your behavior. You're constantly doing these things with your money. And then your habits. I don't know if it was Stephen or Myron who said, you do one thing, it's accidental, you do it two, it's coincidental, you do it three, it's a pattern. We all have money patterns. So I'm going to challenge you to figure out what your money patterns are. So here's what ICTABA looks like, and this is a powerful index when you think about this and you start to think about your wealth consciousness. Your imprints inform your conditioning, which influences your thoughts, which shape your attitudes, which impact your beliefs, which drive your actions, which form your habits, which explain all day, every day, three times on Sunday, the results you have today. Your imprints inform your conditioning. Your conditioning influences your thoughts. Your thoughts shape your attitudes. Your attitudes impact your beliefs. Your beliefs drive what you do with your money. Your actions Form your habits, and your habits explain your financial picture today. So, who's here because they want different results? All right? Are you insane? Is anybody here insane? All right, so because you know insanity is, the definition of insanity is what? Thank you. Doing the same thing over and over again and expecting something different. How many of you have been doing the same tired thing with your money? for years, but you keep thinking that somehow you're going to wake up and you're going to be like a gazillionaire. I was like that, doing the same old thing. And it's so easy to be asleep with your money. But I submit to you today that if you will just do one thing, one little thing different in the next two days, you'll start to create a different emotional currency with your money. Just one little thing different, all right? Every millionaire started with a plan. I didn't grow up aspiring to be a millionaire. That wasn't the conversation in my family. Anybody have those kinds of conversations in their family like all the time? Right? We don't have those kinds of conversations. So what we're going to do for the rest of my time is to exercise your money demons. We're not going get to get to all of y'all. I know some of y'all got some serious demons. <laughs> I ain't a miracle worker, but... I think I can work you through some of your demons. But first, you got to be honest right now about what's in your way. What's in the way of you getting to the next level, whatever that is for you? Those of you, how many of you are on my mailing, my email mailing list? So you, cool. So you heard me say that I'm building a billion dollar empire, at least for the last five years. You've heard me openly say that. Why do you think I say that? Because I believe it without a doubt. And because every time I speak it, it affirms it. Five years ago, I was in masterminds with people who were six-figure earners like I was. Now I mastermind with multimillionaires and billionaires. And it is because I speak where I'm going and where I am every single day that guess what? You start to attract those people in your life. If you ever want to know what your thoughts are, look at the people you're hanging out with. If you ever want to know what you're constantly thinking about, just check out the people you hang out with. And my mother, everybody's got mother and father things they used to say to you. You're like, I wish she would just stop saying that to me. 
But my mother used to always say, watch your crowd. Watch your crowd. And I never got that until I started to really get on the track of becoming a millionaire. Because people who are wealthy talk about different things. They walk differently, they read different things. It's a completely different currency. So let me ask you to write down right now, what is in your way? Is it emotional, is it the physical, is it the mindset? What's in your way? Because you already have admitted that everything, that you are here to create something different. You're here to do something different, you're here to create something different. When I was in college, I went to college at the University of Texas, I remember when I was a freshman, and ironically, one of the people who played on the same team that I played on as a freshman was a senior on that team, and ironically, she is in this room. Joy, raise your hand, sugar. <laughs> and I remember, Joy will can attest to this, I remember thinking, I go to college, and I, you know, I'm the best player there. I'm the best player there, but everybody who had come from high school to college was the best player in their high school. And I remember the first game we played against Korea, and everybody got to play in that game except me. You probably don't remember that. Right. Everybody got to play in that game except me. The worst girl on the team got to play in that game except me. If it had been legal for the water girl to get in the game, she probably would have been playing except for me. My coach was trying to make a point. She had already told me, you know, if you want to be, you know, you're, you were great in high school, whatever. But if you want to get on the floor here, you're going to have to come to work every single day. You're going to have to do it every single day. And I didn't think she was serious until that career game. And everybody got in except for me. And so after the game, my family was there. And some of you have ever played sports or done anything, you know when your family's there, you're looking all in the stands, and you're like, yeah, hey, I'm going to get in in a minute. And the clock is just ticking down. I'm going to get in in a minute. And my sister is here, and she was there. And I was furious. I was just like, I am leaving. I am transferring. I am going to another. She doesn't appreciate my talent. And I walked in, I walked in there. I was 17. And my coach listened to me like, just rant and rave for like 30 minutes and how I was going to transfer and go somewhere where they really appreciated how great I was. And she said, you know what, friend? You can be good. You came here good. But if you want to be great, you got to let me coach you. If you want to be great, you got to let me coach you. When I left the University of Texas, I scored almost 2,000 points. I made every conference team you can imagine, MVP for my teammates, All-American, the whole nine yards. Because in that moment, I understood something. To get to the next level, you always need the insights of somebody else. Somebody who's been there. You've got to have a coach. You've got to have a mentor. And it's no different than when you're trying to build wealth. I used to think the same thing. I can get rich by myself. I can really do this by myself. Every wealthy person will tell you that that is like the stupidest thing you could ever think. No wonder it took me so long because I was trying to do it by myself. Just like when that 17 year old who walked into her coach's office. I thought I could become great without my coach and it just wasn't possible. As my video mentioned, I have uh, been a speaker. I've spoken in over 30 countries. My current clients are multi-billion dollar corporations. I've had multiple six-figure months and now I've masterminded with billionaires and some of my mentors are billionaires. I do not show you that to impress you. I show you that to impress upon you that I believe what I just said about coaching. That I believe what I just said about needing the insights of other people to make you great. Some of you, how many of you saw the, the April issue of Essence magazine? where I and three other, two other, three other folks, women were featured as multimillionaires to talk about the secrets that we've used to build wealth. I've been on CNN, ESPN, I'm gonna talk about some of that on Sunday when I talk about how to create millions and wealth through the media. My equation for becoming a millionaire is very, very simple. Write this down, please. You need a shift plus a system. 
and you will become a multi-millionaire and ultimately a multi-billionaire. You need a shift and a system. That's it. A shift is nothing more than a move from where you are today closer to where you want to be. And everybody in this room is one paradigm shift away from massive and sustainable wealth. Is that frightening for anybody? If you like the, the notion that you are just one paradigm shift away from massive wealth, give me a round of applause. If that excites you, if that excites you that your life is about to change, when you make, not if, when you make one shift, which is why I asked you about 10 minutes ago, what's in your way? The system, for me, it's about laying the right foundation for wealth. Getting the blueprint, getting the right blueprint, because you can have a bad blueprint and just spin your wheels and never get, make the kind of money that you want, and it's a mentor. So it's a, the right foundation, the right plan, the right blueprint, and having the right mentors. When I talk about foundation, I talk about having a healthy self-image, because if you don't believe that you deserve wealth, it will elude you. If you don't believe that you're supposed to be rich and wealthy, you will never be rich or wealthy. Ever. And then you've got to have a desire to be wealthy. I have a friend right now who, I think he makes around $70,000, $75,000. He has probably an 850 credit score. He is compulsive about his credit. And he makes $75,000. His financial picture for him is just very systematic. But when I ask him why he's not making more money, he says, I'm all right. And because he's all right, he only makes $75,000. And he's good with that. He's good with that. So he doesn't have a desire to be wealthy. The next thing you need for your foundation is a compelling why. Why do you want to be wealthy? And here's what's cool about this. There is no right answer about why you want to be wealthy. If you want to be wealthy so you can move to the country and have 10 houses, that's okay because if you judge why you want to be wealthy, wealth will elude you. See, we got to stop thinking that there's a right way to be wealthy and a wrong way to be wealthy. If you're not doing anything illegal and unethical, your why is fine. Why do you want it? You want to take care of your kids? You want to take care of your dad? You want to take None of that, that's cool. All of that's cool. But your why has to be compelling. And then you've got to have a commitment to next level thinking. I was interviewed uh, a couple of days ago on a television show. And one of the things I've always wanted to do, I shouldn't say always, but maybe like the last three years is have my own television network. I don't know the first thing about how you have your own television network. I just know that it's possible. Why? Because there are 600 networks on my Dish channel. So I know it's possible. But I didn't let the how it's going to have to get in my way. And because I didn't let the how it's going to have to get in my way, I just kept saying, this is what I'm going to do. This is what I'm going to do. I was interviewed on a, on a television show the other day. And I, I literally called the person down, the salesperson down that day. And I said, you know, who owns this place? And they told me who owns it. And within two hours, I was on the phone with the guys who owned it. And I said, you know, I want to have my own network. He said, we can set you up with that. Just like that. But if I thought that there was no way I'm going to have my own network, I wouldn't have asked. I would, there would have been nothing in me that would have said to him, can I get the person who owns this place to give me a call? So when this is over, we're going to meet and we're going to talk about my own network. That's next level thinking. I could have said I want to have my own show because that's what I was saying five years ago. But the next level is my own network. So I want you to take whatever you're thinking right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever you're thinking right now and take it to the next level. And don't think about how. Because if your why is strong enough, the how will work itself out. There are people in this room right now who didn't know how, and y'all can give me an amen, you're going to get here this weekend. Am I right or wrong? But you had a compelling why. 
So you got here. All right? The blueprint, the, the plan, you know, having the right plan in place. When I work with my business client, whether they're multi-billion dollar corporations or solo entrepreneurs like some of you, we always talk about a plan. What is the plan? Because I don't know about y'all, I've never driven to Charlotte, but I can imagine that it's a lot easier for me to drive to Charlotte, North Carolina if I have a, a map. I can probably get there if I don't, but it's going to be a lot easier if I do. Would you agree with that? So it's the same way with wealth. you got to figure out what your plan is. What exactly do you need to do and put into your plan to get you where you want to go? And then you got to have flexibility because hit happens, right? <laughs> Stuff is going to happen. And you got to have flexibility to be able to change the game plan when things don't go exactly the way you, you want them to go. When we were doing the registration for the Black Millionaire Summit, how many of you had some credit card issues? Your credit card was declined, it didn't go through, the zip wasn't, you know, something happened, right? Don't be, you see, see here, let me tell you where you gotta make your shift. Some of you are not raising your hand because you think, because I say you had credit card issues, other people around you are gonna think, oh, my credit card didn't go through, my credit card went through. Don't even trip, my credit card went through, right? <laughs> That's why some of y'all not raising your hand. But the deal is this. Some of the credit cards didn't go through just because of the system. I have a very vigilant credit card system because I'm not trying to get sued for fraud because you put in somebody else's credit card number. So my credit card system will, will be just like, oh, you put a seven, it's supposed to be a six. Oh, no, you don't get, you don't get accepted. So a lot of people's credit card didn't go through just because you put Texas, there's Karen here. T Karen lives in Dallas, Texas. She put Dallas, Tennessee. Because it's right next to Texas. I bring that up for one reason. Things don't always go smoothly. I have to tell you that you're going to meet some of my team at the end of this weekend. As great as this event was, and honestly, i got to say, honestly, it has gone really smoothly behind the scenes, we have had some glitches. But we didn't just throw in the towel because it wasn't easy. And if I got, at one point, if I got one more frantic email from my assistant saying, somebody's credit card didn't go through, and now they're just frustrated, and they may not come to the Black Millionaire Summit. And I said, well, if they're going to let one little decline keep them from the Black Millionaire Summit, A, they shouldn't come, and two, they can forget about being wealthy. It's just something that's on the way. I mean, it's just stuff just happens. It's not that big of a deal. It's not that deep. All right? So you got to have the flexibility. Then the final piece is that you got to have a mentor, someone who challenges you to unleash your genius. Now, I don't, I don't know about y'all, but I don't want a mentor who's just challenging me to take one little slight step to the right of where I am. I want someone, you know, maybe it was my inner genius, my inner mentor who said, why are you just asking for a show? Get a network. Because what I learned when I was an announcer for ESPN was that the people who were making the money weren't the cute faces in front of the camera. That's glamorous. Oh, girl, you're on ESPN. I go through an airport, people, oh, you're on ESPN? I was like, yes, I was on ESPN. You know. <laughs> but the people who were making the money were the people behind the camera. I ain't ashamed to tell you that when I was on the air for ESPN, I made like five grand just to sit there and talk about basketball every game. That's not bad cheese to do what I love. But the producer was making 20 grand, and she wasn't even cute. <laughs> and the director was making 25 grand. And on and on and on. You see my point? Sometimes we get hung up on the thing that's on the, you know, the, the, on the surface, on the outer. And I was seriously into being an ESPN announcer until I realized the financial realities of what was behind the scene. And guess what I did? I started my own production company. That's why actors and producers, start, and they start their own companies because, you know, Tom Cruise can make a million on a, on a movie, Will Smith can make a million on a movie, but he's getting back in, he's doing all this other stuff because he's not just talent in front of the camera. Okay? So I want someone who's going to challenge me, and even these people, my business partners, who are going to challenge me to think at a whole new level. Because even if I fall short of what we're talking about, guess where I'm going to land? 
someplace really pretty good. All right? You need somebody who's going to hold you accountable. I am the sister, I am the coach that you will love, but you will not always like. Is there somebody laughing who knows? <laughs> You're not going to like me all the time because I'm the coach who's going to tell you what you don't want to hear. At the end of every basketball game, we would have something called a stat sheet. And on that stat sheet, y'all who, who play sports, you understand, there is a category, rebounds, shooting, all these categories. And at the end of the game, our coach would raise up the stat sheet and start talking about, well, Fran, you know, you shot 0 for 10 in front of everybody, right? There was no way I could hide my weaknesses because my coach was always reminding me by the stat sheet what they were. And it's the same way when you're building wealth. I'm going to see things as a business coach, as a wealth coach, that you're never going to see. You don't think there's anything wrong with you shopping every week for the same thing. I'm the coach who's going to say, you might want to consider putting that money over here. And you're not going to want to hear that. You're not going to want to hear that. But the Chinese have a saying, to know the road ahead, ask those coming back. To know the road ahead, ask those coming back. In other words, if you want to know how to become a millionaire, a multimillionaire, you need to talk to people who are doing it. They're going to be able to tell you, here, here are the hills, here are the mountains, here are the things, here are the, here's what you need to look out for. Now, your journey is not going to be like mine. We do different things. But there are some things that are very consistent on the track to becoming a multimillionaire. Every multimillionaire will tell you that. All right. If you want to learn how to build a mega brand, you want to learn how to get publicity attracting to you like a magnet so that, more, more importantly, puts dollars in your bank account, do yourself a huge favor. Learn from this incredible woman. She will make you wealthy, will build you a brand that will stand the test of time and get you more business than you can ever handle. I've been to just about every seminar you can imagine out there, and if I'm taking the time to go to her seminar and invest my hard-earned dollars in her, then you know she's the best at what she does. Go there, it will change your life. Hi, I'm Anita Swanson, and I just want to say that I felt like I waited the whole weekend just to hear Fran talk today. She's fabulous, she's energetic, she's got a million ideas, a million and one, all guaranteed to help me improve and get along in my career. And um, so thanks. Thanks, Fran. It was really helpful. Now, if you're wondering if I only work with white people, the answer is no. The answer is no, but I'll tell you this. If you'd like to know how to build a multi-million dollar empire, as I said earlier, the fastest way to get there is to talk to people and work with people who, who are doing it, who have done it. How many of you have tried to build your empire without the help of somebody else? Right? Now, how many of you have really tried to build your empire without the help of somebody else? Yes. All right, let me ask you this. How many of you are running a business right now? How many of you are running empires? All right? You know the difference between a business and an empire? It can be summed up with this simple litmus test. If I removed you from your business, could you maintain your level of in income today? By show of hands, if I removed you from your business, could you maintain your level of income today? If you cannot, raise your hand. You cannot. If you could not, could you do it? No. All right? If I removed you from your business, could you maintain your level of lifestyle today? No. So you're running a business. If anything happened to you, anything, you have nothing. You'd be trying to figure out how you get to pay your bills, how you do anything. And what I'm moving my clients toward is understanding from the beginning that you have to be building an empire. An empire does not need you. Does Donald Trump have an empire? Does Oprah Winfrey have an empire? Does Martha Stewart have an empire? Does Diddy have an empire? If either of those people just fell off the face of the earth, they would still be multi-million and billion dollar brands because their businesses don't need them to work. 
They don't need them to work. Jobs that Apple does becomes an event. There's Show a mystery, there's a hype, there's a buildup, and then extreme coverage once it happens. Brent Harris is a marketing specialist and author of mm -hmm. Obamapreneur <coughs> and joins us now. Fran, I mean, it seems to me, if you look at the success of Apple, that it's just smart marketing and smart business by Barack Obama. Absolutely. It's a great comparison to Steve Jobs. I mean, two years ago, Brian, nobody even knew who this guy was. It wasn't until I saw him on Oprah that I had any sense for who he was. I didn't know he was a senator. But that shows you the power of marketing and branding in this, in this election. And I think two years ago, I thought the running mate for the Democratic was going to be Hillary Clinton. There's absolutely no way anybody was going to beat her. And it was like, who is Barack Obama? But they understood from the beginning that we have to make this more than about politics. This has to be something about business. It has to be a powerful marketing plan from the jump. Well, you look at it. All right. That is Neil Cavuto's show. It's the number one business show on the planet. And they called me to come in and talk about the Clinton and Obama race after I wrote an e-book called Obamapreneur, Secrets from America's Next President. Did anybody catch that I wrote an e-book that got me on the top business show in the land? It's not about doing something fancy. It's not about doing something that's earth shattering. It's about doing something that's innovative. I don't want to get on there talking about political this, political that. I mentioned to you guys earlier that I really focused in on what Obama had done differently, why he beat her, had everything to do with marketing and branding and salesmanship. I wrote a 30-page e-book that was quite cleverly titled Obamapreneur. So Fox News calls me every couple of weeks. They wanted me to actually come on and do an analysis of the leadership of McCain and Obama. Do you understand that from an e-book, now I am analyzing the presidential candidates? Right. <laughs> I had to laugh. I was on the phone laughing because when you don't know any limits, you will try anything. And when you know where you're going, you know that most things will work. Because the reason I get booked on things is because I tend to look at things, I tend to look at business very differently. I tend to look at marketing very differently. And people were calling after that saying, where can we get Obamapreneur? You need to go to Obamapreneur.com. That's where you need to go. It's an e-book. But sometimes we get so caught up in the thinking that we've got to do something elaborate to really grow our business. Now, what do you think happened after that? People saw me on Fox News. Nobody knew it was an e-book. Google me. They called. They bought the book. Other news outlets started calling. Do you think my speaking fees went up? Absolutely. You think my consulting fees went up? Absolutely. You think my coaching fees went up? Absolutely. From an e-book, a $37 e-book. So it's about the innovation. It's about understanding that each of you has something that you bring to the table that nobody else can bring to the table. Here's what's interesting about putting the Black Millionaire Summit together. When I started looking for women, because I usually go to seminars and I'm usually the only woman speaking. And so I made a commitment that I was going to bring the most powerful women in the world to this summit. And some people started saying, why are you bringing Cheryl Burchard? Why are you bringing, don't, don't they do what you do? Why would you bring somebody in who does what you do? That kind of thinking will keep you puffed. <laughs> because what I have to understand and what I've, I've known forever, and that's probably because I'm, I'm an athlete, you can be surrounded by great people and still be great. And my genius is not your genius. And that we can still all, be, there's still enough and plenty and more than enough for us all to get more than enough and keep getting more than enough and other people get more than enough. So I'm never hesitant to bring powerful women in my space. I want to learn from them. And you're never going to make money and become wealthy if you're always thinking about if they get it, then you're not going to get it. Or if you're the only black woman, how many of you, be honest, you've been glad when you've been the only black person in the room? Because you're like, okay, now I get to be the only black person in the room and I get all the, 
right? Or I'm the only woman, or I'm the only whatever it is. That's a poverty consciousness that will never, ever, ever serve you. So let's talk about the Millionaire Business School. Could you guys pass those enrollment forms out for me, please? There is a reason that when Fox and CNN and CNBC want to talk about innovative business strategies that they call me. It's not because I'm going to be boring on the air. It's not because I'm going to tell them what every, any other business strategist can tell them. It's because, like you, I have a unique spin on most of the things that I do. And I'm not afraid to be different. And I'm not afraid to say the things that some people won't say. And as I mentioned earlier, some of you are potentially holding yourself back because you're afraid of how it's going to look or what people are going to think. I didn't start making money until I stopped caring what people thought. Ten years ago, I would not have been on stage dancing. At home, I would be acting a fool, but in public, I never did that. Until someone told me that if you're willing, if you're not willing to stand out, Fran, you are never going to be outstanding. If you're not willing to stand out, you're never going to be outstanding. I started my first business when I was nine years old. It was a snow cone stand in Dallas. I'm from Dallas, Texas. I started that business not because the entrepreneurial flame was burning inside me and I just, I've always been this genius. I started that business because somebody told me no. How many of you have ever taken a no and turned it into something powerful? How many of you got kids? So as you know, if you got kids, they ask for something different every day, right? For me, it's roller skating, it's ballet, it's whatever. For me, it was the same way. And my mom had gotten tired of financing all of my whims. But I was serious about this thing. I wanted to sing in the choir at church. And mom was like, well, that's cool. You know, you found Jesus. That's real cool. But the $110, 70 or $110, I'm hazy on what it was, you're going to have to find out. You're going to figure that out for yourself. So we started the snow cone stand out of my garage. Mom, without a doubt, was very hands-on in this business. But by the end of the summer, we had made $1,500. And I was hauled. Nine years old. Nine years old because I didn't know it wasn't possible. See, the problem with a lot of us is that we think it's not possible. We've, we've become adults and we think that things are not possible. And that's why I get on stage and dance and that's why I do some of the things I do and that's why I'm so energetic because I live my life with the passion and enthusiasm of children. Because I remember what it's like to not have a care, not always think about the visa bill, not doing that. And that's the place that keeps me successful. When you don't know what's not possible, you can do almost anything. And some of you are at this level at your, with your wealth thermostat because you think it's not possible. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to forget about the money. I made a decision four or five years ago that I was never going to discuss money with people again. I used to answer when people say, how much money do you make? I used to tell them. But I stopped talking about the money. Because I figured out for me, it's not about the money. Don't trip. I love the money. <laughs> but don't get it twisted. I love the money. But I understood that when I started just stepping into my passion, my purpose, the money just happened. Anybody ever chase money? Chase money, right? Anybody ever done something for money, you know, just like taking engagements or taking jobs because you just needed the money? Everybody's been there. Well, I want to offer you an opportunity to live a lifestyle where you don't have to chase money. You know, today we turn down things. There was somebody in L.A. who wanted me to come and speak, do something for, for $10,000. They wanted me to speak somewhere. And then it turned into an all-day thing. And I said, well, I'll do it for $25,000. And they said, well, we, you know, maybe we have to talk to you next year. And my assistant was like, girl, let's get this money. And I said, no. Because I don't chase money. Would I have liked the $10,000? Girl, you know I would have wanted that $10,000. Come on. <laughs> I wanted that $10,000. But I didn't have to have that $10,000. 
And so it's about creating the kind of lifestyle that you want. What I've been able to do over the past 20 years is to figure out what my formula is for becoming wealthy and to figure out what are the things that help me to constantly create and manifest millions because that's what I was born to do. And I can finally say that without feeling uncomfortable about saying that. What we've created in this room for you is a, is a space where you can feel comfortable looking at somebody saying, I'm going to do 10 million in the next 10 years and not feel uncomfortable or, or, or have to wince about doing that. If you're not thinking about doing 10 million in the, in the last next 10 years, you're in the wrong room. Because that's where the bar is. Give yourself a round of applause. That's where the bar is in this room. <laughs> 